What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Sporgo. And today we're going to talk about the selector for the limited characters that you get whenever you reach story mode 512. But before we get into that, I want to touch on a couple things in the banner. The first thing is, guys, that you should always pull in this beginner banner first because it's only 50 pulls before you get one of these five characters and the reason i say that is one use your materials only for these 50 pulls first so that way you can get one of these characters and depending on the character you get really would depend maybe on who you're going to choose from that selector maybe if you want to level up the, your like say for example if yao is your favorite character and you get her then you could just get a dupe for her from the selector and level her up a little bit further right or you could have two different limited characters at the same time maybe one shotgun maybe one sniper maybe one assault rifle whatever the case may be for you you could do that also you you could either get a dupe for one or you could get just a different completely different limited character but i really think that you should pull in here first before you decide to go any further also guys whenever you say you reach a point like what i have where i have 10 remaining don't do this guys because the chances of you getting the character are pretty much you know they're pretty slim guys i mean you do have a 2.3 percent chance but you're really just better off to start off your new banner in the duties command and just come in here and start doing your pulls because this is a one-time thing once you get your limited character from here that's it you might get lucky and get them within the next 10 or 20 maybe if you get a character right at the very beginning but once this 50 pulls ends it is done it will disappear and it's going to go straight to the duty command so after you get your limited character in here no matter where it is i would advise you just to jump in the duties command and start using your gems in here and i will be doing a review about acacia guys she's a pretty damn awesome character i also was able to get her weapon as well so that way i could do a complete review about the character but something i do want to show you guys about the limited character that's pretty damn cool is that if you go to personal file you'll actually see that she is in here and you can farm for shards every day for this character now in the beta we knew that we could farm for limited characters that are in the regular standard banner, but we never knew anything about a limited banner. And now we know if you do get a character from a limited banner, you can actually come in here and you can farm for that character every single day. You can get shards for them every single day. So just know that if you do pull in the limited banner, you can get shards for this character. I just want to give you guys a little heads up about that. Now let's talk about the selector and which one of these characters you should pull. Now, but before we get into talking about this, guys, as always with any game, with whatever characters you're deciding to pull for, always pull for your favorites. Always pull for your favorites. Games are all about fun, having a good time. Pick whichever character you decide to choose because I can tell you guys from experience, from playing this game, that no matter which one of these girls you get, they're going to be amazing characters for you, depending on the style of character that you like. It really just depends on the kind of character that you want to play with. I mean, you have sniper characters, you have assault rifle here, you have sniper, you have shotgun, you have a sniper, and you have assault rifle right here. No pistol, unfortunately, in here. The pistol is in the limited banner with Acacia. But let's talk about these characters one at a time so we can provide some perspective as far as maybe which one of these characters you'd like to, you know, maybe level up. Now, this character here, I actually played on the beta, and she is a wonderful character. Now, we're going to talk about these three different things that these characters offer. We're going to talk about their standard skill. We're going to talk about what they do as a support whenever you bring them in as a QTE, which means you bring them in just as a striker for a brief moment, and then they go back up in their little spot and you just keep using your regular main damage dealer and then we're going to talk about their ultimate a little bit okay so when it comes to life guys her standard skill is you know these two little guns are going to shoot out from the side of her and they're pretty op because once you get these things leveled up you actually will have a cc effect where you have a 10 percent chance to freeze the target for three seconds and this works on anyone at all it works on everyone guys which means they just sit around in a stalemate and you can just blow them away which is great for you and also in co-op with your other you're with your friends as well it's a really op effect that she has her cc is nuts and guys her damage is very very good i don't care what anyone says out there about life she is a very good damage dealer and if you'd like using an assault rifle where you have that machine gun fire you know with some pretty decent range then i think this would be a really good character for you to pull then we get into the support passive now whenever you use her as a support guys she's actually going to freeze the targets for four seconds so whenever you drop her in using your qte right whenever you see the support guys this is a skill that the characters do whenever they're doing their qte whenever you just bring them in do a little damage and then you just but you just keep using your damage dealer and 
she actually will freeze them. So if you have life on your team, right, and you're obviously might be using her as a damage dealer, but she can also be a really good support because she's going to have an insane amount of CC. That's really what you're getting with this character is a lot of CC, some really good damage, and some decent range in the semi-audio fire with her, which is actually very, very nice. Very potent character. And then her ultimate, guys, is insane. This thing has a huge amount of AC. It also... It has a huge amount of CC. It freezes everyone in the area for four seconds. So she's got freeze on everything. It is godly. And her damage is very, very good in the signature. She is destructive and she's in an iframe. She doesn't take damage at all when she does it. Then we talk about good old Yao, right? By the way, guys, uh, she's also a frost character. So if you have a frost assault rifle, that's actually going to be really good for life as well. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you guys to pull for Yao. The reason they're telling you to pull for Yao, because you're actually going to get a limited weapon for a sniper, right? This is a frost, but it will work on Yao. So that's a big reason why a lot of players tell you to go ahead and pull for Yao, because you're kind of getting the better of both worlds. You're going to get a free limited weapon and you're going to get a free limited character but she's not the only sniper in here as we'll talk about here in a little bit but Yao guys does do thermal damage which is actually very very good and this skill actually interrupts the target special skill this is her standard skill so whenever you use her standard skill she's going to interrupt the opponent she's going to knock them in the air which is actually really good and as a support guys she just deals a lot of burning dot which is really good for three seconds right she places a winter solar corn oil trap that lasts for five seconds, applying burning effect to the targets inside the trap and dealing thermal damage equal to 10% of her attack every 0.5 seconds for three seconds. So it's a nice little dot damage dealing skill that she does have for her QTE. And then her ultimate, uh, Winter Soldier Tactical Equipment Solar Armor provides Yao with all type of resistance of 20%, which is actually really good for survivability, but she shatters the solar armor, enters the solar flare, and her weapon is replaced with new solar arm. The solar arm bonus resistance is no longer active when Yao is in the solar flare state. Solar storm shots deal thermal damage, but to not gain you energy. New solar storm cannot be reloaded through ordinary means. Yao will exist the solar flare state immediately when she reloads, runs out of ammunition, or leaves the field after solar flare state ends. Solar armor will be reactivated and Yao will regain all type of resistance bonus. It's really making her quite the tank, but she also has the increased critical damage amplifier whenever you level up. So it's going to do a lot of damage. So really this skill is really, really good for damage. This ultimate is very, very nice for damage, right? And then we get into Finny. Now, Finny is a shotgun user. She's a short range attacker. Obviously, Yao is a long range attacker, but you are going to have slow reload times with Yao, whereas with a character like Life, it's going to be fast reload times because she's just loading up clips. And Finny here is going to have a slow reload time also in short range, but she's going to have a lot of power in short range, right? The kind of unfortunate thing about her is that she doesn't have a lot of damage in long range. But when it comes to her standard skill, guys, this thing's pretty damn nice because what it does is is she deals electrical damage, but she enters the crown of thorns state immediately accumulate 80 mercy and reducing damage dealt to destructible items and new energy gained while in this state in the crown of thorn state. Each pellet that hits the target accumulates 1.2 mercy. Finny's rate of fire increases based on mercy points up to max of 80. Now this is very, very important for a character like this because if her rate of fire is increasing, she's going to be pumping that gun a whole lot faster, firing her shots at a much faster rate, which means you're going to do a whole lot more damage that's what it's all about guys with the girl especially at short range she's just going to do a lot more damage and she's going to increase her damage whenever you start leveling this thing up and then as a support guys she does the same thing fire if any encourages her teammates and increases the rate of fire of the operator on the field by 18 percent so if you're using a character with a sniper rifle or you're using a character with assault rifle pistol whatever the case may be their rate of fire is going to increase so instead of a pop 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 it's going to be pop 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 it's going to be a much faster rate of fire so you're going to do a whole lot more damage it's a very very good support skill i actually use it quite a bit or have used it on the beta version of the game and it definitely made a huge difference guys in the damage of your main damage dealers and then we get into her ultimate where you know she finney creates a golden sun domain for 10 seconds dealing electrical damage and she is in an iframe when she does this she doesn't take any damage to surrounding targets once every two seconds, interrupt their special skills. So she can interrupt special skills, and it does a pretty good amount of damage, especially at short 
range. Really, really cool. And then we get into another sniper. So just remember, guys, that that free sniper rifle that you're going to get will actually work on Marion as well. Now, Marion deals kinetic damage, right? And she consumes one bullet to perform a quick shot, dealing kinetic damage. Cannot be used when the magazine is empty. When Cloud Shots hits, it will mark the target with Falling Feather for three seconds, and the next standard shot will automatically lock onto the target. What that means, guys, is if you miss your next shot, you will hit. You're guaranteed to hit the shot. And if she's built up well, guys, she's going to do a lot of damage with that damn sniper rifle, right? And then after the hit, it will clear the mark. Cloud Shot can deal crit or hit weak spot and deals double damage to shield. So whenever you're going against opponents that have shields, she's going to do double the damage. It's actually quite monstrous for her standard skill that's always going to be lying around. This thing is only on a five second cooldown. And then when you level it up, the charge stacks of Cloud Shot increases to three which is amazing for more power and then obviously when you level up further it's just going to be more damage and then as a support guys she's going to you know vault backward while firing one empowered shot at the target dealing kinetic damage so she's going to jump down she's going to take a shot and she's going to knock back all the targets in the path the uh, the skill interrupts the target special skills for eight seconds so this is another interrupt skill that you can use to stop an opponent from attacking so when they're coming at you she can bring her in she's going to knock them back and that's going to you know really come in handy guys to save your life very 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 good skill to have and then when we get into her ultimate she's just going to deal a bunch of damage knocking them all up in the air which is awesome guys this also interrupts their special skills so she's really going to be good for knocking opponents up in the air interrupting their skills and doing lots of damage especially against opponents with shields and then we get into last but not least and that is Frisha or Fridia depending on how you want to pronounce it but when it comes to her standard skill guys she uses one silence chain to bind the target after hitting the target chains are unleashed from the target's location to force surrounding enemies dragging them toward the original target then the explosion is triggered in the original target's location dealing thermal damage and printing targets from using special skills for 10 seconds Silence chain explosion damage, 60% attack of 140%, right? After using standard skill, the explosion inflicts burning effect on the targets, dealing 10% of Fridia's attack as thermal damage every 0.5 second for 5 seconds. So this is a nice little skill that she has. I actually have her on this account where she throws out a weapon, does some good thermal damage, knocks them back a little bit. Pretty nice little handy tool that she has here. And then as a support, guys, she actually has a really good support passive where she applies 5 stacks of Fire God protection to deployed operator for 10 seconds. This stacks up to 5 times and when hit, operator loses 1 stack of Fire God protection and reserve flame is triggered. Damage taken for this hit is reduced by 50% and surrounding targets are burned dealing thermal damage every 0.5 seconds. So what she's doing for this brief moment is she's just making your character a little bit tankier. If I am reading this correctly, which is actually really good. And then when it's leveled up, Fire God Protection provides an additional iron body effect, which I think means that you're actually invulnerable. Like, so whenever you use her as a support character, I think this means invulnerable, but it doesn't exactly say what she does. If I get her leveled up, I'll let you know in the future. But right now, I'm not really 100% for sure. But she's definitely going to be used as a support character to make your characters tank your guys whenever you're using her as a QTE character. And then we get into her ultimate where she unleashes Lasting Flame at the target during which time Frida cannot be moved and can slowly adjust the attack direction. So whenever she does this guy, she is not an iframe. She can take damage whenever she's doing it, but she just shoots out this giant thermal beam and you can actually move it in whatever direction you want. And it's pretty damn awesome in all honesty. I thought it was awesome when I saw it, but whenever I saw that she took damage, I, I'll be honest with you guys i really didn't care for it. so whenever you're playing with this character you have to be very very careful whenever you're using this skill and then when lasting flame repeatedly hits the target final damage bonus is further increased to three percent so she's just going to do a lot more damage with her ultimate right and again guys you know she is an assault rifle character and so is life right you're going to have that semi-auto fire at a decent range you're going to have a lot of range with yao and marion here and you're going to get a free sniper rifle for them. And you're going to have short range, but a whole lot of power with Jeanette. So depending on the kind of player you are, whether you like to be in your face and you want to be with Finny, or you like to be far away and just pick them apart with the sniper girls, or you just like to play moderately with either the, one of the assault rifle girls, really depends on which one of these characters you want to choose. You guys can see that I haven't chosen mine. I'm actually thinking about choosing life because 
I love life. I think she's an amazing character. I used her on the beta version of the game and I love her, but I don't want you guys to be swayed by my decision. You pick whoever you want. Pick whichever of these one of these characters that you like the most, whether it's aesthetically gameplay wise or you just love their personality, whatever the case may be, choose the character for your own personal reasons, despite whatever people say about the meta. So guys, Hopefully this will help you out as far as deciding which one of the characters you're going to choose from the selector. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GD plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody. Take care.